what do we mean when we say science of reading? The science of reading is not a program and it's not a couple of research studies that say this or that. It's the body of scientific research over the last several decades that definitively proves how the brain learns to become a proficient reader and writer. So when we say something is aligned with the science of reading, we mean that it's aligned with that body of research. Well, what does the research say? It says some things you probably already know. There are five pillars of reading, phonemic awareness, phonics, fluency, vocabulary, and comprehension. But the science also points to some things that are not common knowledge yet. First, written language is a contrived system. The brain images show that reading and writing don't come naturally, which is why high quality instruction is so important. Secondly, phonics needs to be taught explicitly and systematically with a scope and sequence, but without using three cueing. Three cueing is an unusual term for something that you've probably seen everywhere. You may have heard of it in strategies like, does it look right? Does it sound right? Does it make sense? Guess and check, MSV, or reading recovery. Three cueing encourages readers to use clues other than phonics patterns to decode words. The problem is that's not how proficient readers read. We use a process called orthographic mapping that allows our brains to decode a word like horse faster than we can recognize a picture of a horse. The brain is hardwired for sight and speech, but the connections in our brains that make orthographic mapping possible don't get built if we're using pictures or other clues to guess words instead of using phonics patterns to decode them. Next, high frequency words need to be taught using sound spelling patterns as much as possible, rather than asking students to memorize sight words. Memorizing words stores them in a different part of the brain than orthographic mapping, which means that students are spending a lot more energy recalling the words and aren't able to connect their sound spelling patterns to other similar words. Another thing that's not common knowledge is how comprehension works. It is settled science that the single biggest driver of reading comprehension is background knowledge of words and the world. So we must intentionally build knowledge and vocabulary about a variety of social studies and science topics from the moment students enter school. We can't wait, as the old saying goes, until students are able to read to learn. The best way to build that knowledge is to use rich grade level texts for comprehension instruction and to use scaffolding to give all students access to those texts. That requires a shift away from the common practice of using easier leveled text for struggling students because research shows that students build knowledge and fluency much faster when everyone reads and writes about the same rich grade level texts during comprehension and content instruction. In a K-2 classroom, this is accomplished through read alouds and discussions of texts that are a grade or two above what students can read on their own. Finally, the science points to the necessity of frequent shared and independent writing, not just to inform others, but as an essential learning tool to help students crack the code and to synthesize and communicate their understanding of topics and texts. So that's the scoop on the science of reading. Be on the lookout for more science of reading videos that dig deeper into each of the five pillars plus writing.